So you're undefeated in 15 mixed martial arts bouts. Do you think you're getting the respect that you deserve from the media and pundits in the industry? Um, I think I get a lot more respect from a lot of the UK pundits. I think my name's maybe not as out there at the minute in America as I'd like it to be. Um, but I think that comes down to the pandemic mainly um, because I keep harping on but I was always this guy in cage, I was with this massive following and a crazy fan base and you know every time this guy fights it the crowd goes bonkers and then obviously I get to the biggest stage in the world and three of my four fights have been behind closed doors practically so I don't think it's a lack of respect I think it's just a lack of exposure in terms of people haven't got to see the pull I've got in a minute and um, obviously fighting in front of a crowd in London which is essentially an home show for me especially in the UFC I think that'll open people's eyes a lot more to the, the, the type of pull I have in the UK and even if I was to fight in America in front of a crowd I got a lot of American fans and, and a lot of support out there and I think just by getting in front of a, like the last time in the Apex there was probably 100 people in there and when I was walking out a good, good half of them were, were shouting Jack shows on fire and let's go Jack and I was like fucking they know me, they do know who I am over here, you know, I'm, not, I'm not just some some guy from the mountain in Wales that nobody knows about, they, 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 they do know me, so I think it's just a case again in front of those fans and, you know, I'm not, I'm not really ever, I, the last fight was a little bit, not, I wouldn't say boring, but slow because of the, because I was injured, but I'm, I'm never really in a boring fight, it's always fast paced and technical, so I think the sooner I, I get in front of these big crowds, the, the better, you know, and the more the UFC are going to see what, what, what they're working with. I, I don't want these uh, these apex shows no more. These or these behind closed door shows. Let's let's see them off now. Let's have some uh, some crowds back. How important is it for you to remain undefeated? Is there much of a pressure for you, like carrying that zero? I wouldn't say I feel like I don't feel any extra pressure going into the fight undefeated. I've always been the guy like it's one fight at a time. So I'm only as good as this next fight. And win, lose, or draw in this next fight, I'll only be as good as the fight after that. So I wouldn't say the the old um, adds pressure, but it definitely helps in terms of the push and the hype. And you know, when I'm fighting, I'm, I'm always marketed as undefeated. You know, undefeated as an amateur, undefeated as a pro. Um, so it definitely helps with the push, and it definitely helps. As, it's a good way to market yourself. You know, undefeated, ne ne never lost a fight. But I wouldn't say necessarily adds pressure to me personally because I'm just constantly, whenever I'm in a fight camp, I'm just focused on the guy in front of me. I'm not concerned about the last 15 fights, oh I'm going to be fighting in 2, 3, 4 fights time, it's always this guy in front of me. In my head I suppose, I kind of think as I'm going in there, oh and oh, I'm oh and oh and he's oh and oh and the result of this fight is all that matters, it doesn't, it doesn't matter in terms of the grander scale of things like that I'll have 16 wins rather than 15 or that you know it won't add any extra pressure going into the next one, it's just get this guy in front of you out of the way and then worry about what's, what's been and what's going to come after that. Your dad said to me that he finds this job with you very hard at times. Um, he says everything you do in life is for your children, you nurture them, you protect them, and you make sure that they don't get hurt. But I send mine out to war, which is a very unnatural feeling. How does it feel hearing that, and do you have any similar feelings that you can elaborate on? Um, it, it's a little bit tough to you, to be honest, because to, to me, I haven't got no kids, so I can't really appreciate that feeling. Obviously, I love my, my parents and my missus and my family. I love them all the bits, but I haven't got a child that other than my dog. You know, like I protect my dog till the end, till the end, till the end of time. But my dog's never gonna go and have a cage fight. But it is tough to hear because you know, to me, he's just my coach and he's there to coach me. It's, it's I, you know, it's a job role for me. It's it's a sport, but you strip it all back. It is it is. We're like the modern day gladiators or the modern day samurai, you know, it's me and another guy. We've trained to fight each other for eight weeks and essentially you take away the ref and the judges and the medicals. It's essentially, it can be, it could be a fight to the death if it was a thousand years ago. So, it is tough to hear him say that, you know, like, I remember him saying it and I thought, yeah, I've never thought of it like that. Um, and the only thing I can sort of familiarise with it is when I used to watch him fight. In the, you know, and, and I'm not his father, so I don't <clears throat> have that protective instinct, but I remember watching him fight MMA when I was 10 years of age, and even grappling comps, I used to watch him do a, do a jiu-jitsu comp, and then my stomach is in knots, and I suppose it's the same like when the boys fight, like when I watch 
Brett and and Josh and even more so now like my the young boys coming from like my brother-in-law he's, he's 16 and we got Yoan who's like and I'm watching Yoan at 16 fighting grown men and my stomach's in knots like I, I'll go in there and fight like that I won't even think twice about it does it does it make me nervous does it make me anxious but if I sit there and, and think about my old man like if my old man said to me I'm gonna have a, a fight I'm gonna come have an MMA come back I'd be like whoa whoa no 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 don't do it so I can only imagine what he must go through you know I, I watched him and, and he was at a good level you know at the time but when you think the level I'm at you know I'm at the, the the Premier League of MMA so for him to send me out I can only again they keep going back like the old school way it'd be like it'd be like sending me out as a gladiator to fight the, the next the best guy from this country or the or the best guy from this area of the world it's like it, it gotta be daunting for him but it obviously makes me um it makes my like respect and admiration for him grow even more to be able to do it because I know if I had a kid it's wrong of me to say it but I would steer my kid away from the sport um, whereas he's never steered me towards the sport he's probably tried to steer me away but some things are meant to be and this is just what I was meant to do so for him to be able to do all that but stay professional as well like you know before the fight I mean I, I can't explain it to people because he's just a nervous wreck and I can see he's a nervous wreck and, and he does this he does his best to, to keep it in, especially as we've got, you know, I remember being like pro debut or cage warriors debut and he was being sick in the changing room and I'm down to tell him to chill out. Whereas now I can see he can hold it back a little bit better, but I know he's only doing that for my benefit because he knows if I see him anxious, it starts to make me think, why is he anxious? So, you know, I can see that he, he sort of lets Carl and, and Gary and him take on more of a, a coach's role in the, in the warm up, but as soon as our fight starts, he sort of flips his switch and he goes from dad to coach and, and, and it is ultimate professionalism from start to finish and you know in, in, in no uncertain terms I wouldn't have it any other way because I know and it's the same with Carl and my other coaches so I know anything they tell me to do in there they're not telling me it for any other reason than it's for my best interest so but yeah it's tough it is tough to hear him say it but <laughs> unfortunately it is what it is you know like I've always said he won't I won't fight now if he can't ever corner me or, or refuses to coach me, then that'd be me done. You know, if he said I can't do it no more, I, I'm stepping down. I'm not going to coach no more. I'd be like, well, I'm I'm going to step down with you then, old man, because uh, I'm not going to go in there without. I wouldn't feel comfortable or confident without him in there. You know, you see, you see Khabib's guys. They say like it's he, it's cheating having him there. He's a secret weapon. That's how I feel with him. He, it's 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 almost a cheat code because. I sort of know what he's going to say before he's going to say it and I know when he does say it I know his voice that well just bang I hear it I can go and I can react on it and he, he says the same thing I'm like a robot in there almost it's like having um, like a controller it's like having an Xbox controller he's controlling me in the game and uh, I think that's why we've been as successful as we have yeah that's a phenomenal answer man I, really I know I waffled on a bit didn't no, I? <laughs> every second of that was beautiful what do you think to the current state of the bantamweight division at the moment it's incredible and it's to to sit back and watch like I'm a UFC fanboy and MMA fanboy so I sit back and watch every show start to finish whether it's an Apex show or fight night or it's a big pay per view and every single week there seems to be a bantamweight fight and whether those guys are ranked um, whether they're top contenders or they're like me up and comers or, or they're debutants I'm always like just keeping a quiet eye on it and, and eyeing up who's, who's doing what, who's getting better, who's coming down, who's coming up and it just seems that there's, there's constantly and new talent coming through. There's, there's, there's new guys waiting to fight for a ranking, like myself. There's, there's ranked guys that are starting to push towards the belt. There's top level guys that are dropped down a little bit, and then all of a sudden they start like, like, like a Dominic Cruz. You think he's done, and then he bangs out two big wins, and you think, right, he's back in the mix. TJ Dillashaw, you don't see him for two years, all of a sudden he's in title contention. So it's an interesting time to be a part of the division, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I, I, I wouldn't want to look back in, in 10 years and, and be what, like, look at the state of boxing at the minute. You've got world champions who are beating guys and you're thinking, is that a, like, you're, you're a world champion on paper, but are you legitimately the top five best in the world? No. Like, I, I can honestly say, when I look back, this is probably the peak time for the Bantamweight division. Or, even if it does develop on past the level it is at now, I'll be able to look at it and say, when I was around, that was the toughest division and I was a part of it and then boys I fought none of them were walk overs they were all capable of being a top contender and being a champion and that's the only, that's the only way I've ever known you know, I'd ever won it I've never padded my records I've, I've never looked for an easy fight and I, and I wouldn't wouldn't want to do it now and it's put me in good stead in hindsight because 
fight a parted record and then got to, the, to this division and I gotta start fighting these killers who, who even even like like Valuev. He's a killer. Not not many people have probably heard of him outside your hardcore fans, but he's a killer. He's not no walkover, he's no joke. So if I had a padded record and I'd gone to a fight with him, then who knows what what sort of how, how that prep would have gone. But fortunately, I've done things the right way, amateur through the pro, and I try and emphasize that like you if you want to be the best in the world, you've got to be ready to fight the best all the way through. And that, that doesn't mean like at one and all you've got to fight Peter Yan or Aljamain Sterling, but it means at one and all you gotta be right to fight the best available guy at that time at the ten and all. You got like when you're when you're in Cage Warriors or Bellator or, or some of these other shows. If you want to be the best, be right to fight their best guy. And then when you go to the UFC, be right to fight the this best guy. And then this is the next best guy. And that's how I'd want it. And, that, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. And and to have these big big names, it's nice to see the light being shone on the lighter divisions. It's always the heavyweights and the middleweights and the welterweights that had the attention for years. Now we're getting it. So. What a time to be a part of it! You know, it's the the stars are aligning nicely for me to propel myself into the mix and and become a big name and well, worldwide, not just obviously in the UK. So, who excites you the most in the rankings? TJ Dillashaw excites me the most, um, and and that's that's nothing personal against him. It's just I I always remember growing up. I say growing up, you know, as a as an early pro or, or late on in my amateur career and. He was always the guy. I remember watching him beat Barrow the first time and thinking, Mike, like, Barrow was untouchable, and then he just whitewashed him twice. Um, I know he lost to Sahudo, but he, for a long time, I remember me and my old man looking at Dillashaw. And this was before I was even a bantamweight, so it's not like I was eyeing him up as a future opponent or anything, but I was looking at him thinking, this guy's untouchable. Um, so to now be maybe like a year or two years away from having a potential chance to fight with that guy, that excites me, you know, to, to be able to. Say so, you know, like it's, it's not, it's not sort of out of context for me to start eyeing up a fight with him in, in eighteen to twenty-four months. You know, it, it, it's, 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 it's in our, it's, you know, that's the type of guys I'm looking at. And I know I got a long way to go. I got to get in the rankings. I got to climb the rankings. But it only takes a good two years. I'm in a position where I can start saying, come here, come here, and TJ have a little, uh, little rollabout and, and see how that one goes. So yeah, definitely TJ just because of his style and. I like that he mixes everything in as well. It's not just like he's a banger and he's so exciting because he's so he can rest. Like look at his fight with um, Sandy again. I know it's controversial, but had he not been able to wrestle and scramble, he probably would have lost that fight on point. So the fact that he's so good all round, that type of thing excites me to be able to fight the guy and think, no, this is going to be hard work wherever we go, and I want it to be just as hard work for him as well. So someone like TJ, that that gets me excited. What do you make to Timor? Obviously, he's got very high output dynamic striking and he enjoys a good scrap so what's the antidote to fighting someone like that the antidote to someone like um, someone like him is is you gotta dictate the fight you know if you let him do his, his thing he's in and out his striking he's very elusive he got a good variety of shots he's in and he's out he doesn't stay in range very long and he dictates the fight well and if you're not shutting that shit down early he'll steal the rounds mm -hmm. You know he's not a massive finisher. He can dig, obviously he's explosive, but he'll put, he'll he'll nick those rounds all day. We've seen him do it. Um, so I've got to shut him down early. Whether that be take him down early, or whether that be establish myself on the feet and hurt him early, or put him on the back foot and dictate my striking. But I've got to get my game going early. I can't let him get into a rhythm. I can't let him settle in. And it's going to be frantic from the start. It's not going to be a fight where I can feel my way in. It's like as 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 my coach uh, Carl says to me. You know, get ready, cause cause this is going not to hundred real fucking quick, <laughs> and I, and I, and that's it. The, the quote he's used to me on more than one occasion. Uh, you know, when I've been stood in the cage and he's in my ear. So that's how it's gonna go. It's gonna go not to hundred fast, and uh, I've got to dictate, and and it's simple as that. There's no secret to it. How I choose to dictate, he'll have to wait and find out on the night. But but I've got to come and dictate from start to finish, or from start until I can get him out of there. I know he's not ranked yet, but how much of a threat is Umar and Magomedov going to be for your title run over the next few years? Um, I think he's very good. He looked good on the weekend. Um, he had a very good win against Kara, but he's he's not a guy locked at in and think quite, you know he's going to take some beating. Um, I think me and him will meet down the line. It's inevitable. Um, we're both undefeated. We both got that sort of mole in style. I know he's a, you know, and. 
by no means disrespect, but I, I think he's got that, that little bit more like one dimensional, like Khabib style, where I know he kicks well, but he's just going to come out and try and maul you. Um, I, I think of myself as a little bit more well rounded in terms of I may strike, I may grapple, I may wrestle, but inevitably we're going to meet, and, and when we do, is going to be a bomb burner. It would have been a bomb burner had we fought this time, but imagine us in two, three years' time with bigger names, better records, a, a better resume. It's, it's definitely one for the future. How imposing do you think it will be? fighting Umar and having Khabib's presence kind of radiating from the corner. Do you know, I was looking forward to that, to be honest. And like, I, I'm a massive Khabib fan. I, I, the last like two, three years watching him win the title and become the big superstar he is. And I just love, I love everything about Khabib, the way he is on the mic. You, you see his videos behind the scenes with DC, he's a character. And I, it would have been an honor, to be honest, to have him corner against me. And it would have been a challenge in itself to try and hand him a loss as a corner. I think he has, since our fight got but I think he has picked the loss up. But obviously, he's probably like, what, 90% 90, 90 or 99% win, win record as a coach. So it would, it would have been a great honour to, to jump in the end, to challenge myself against, like, an iconic fighting family like that. You know, it's like um, the Nurmagomedov name, whether they're in the UFC, they're domestic, they're in Bellator, straight away, who do you line that up with? Khabib straight away and uh, so it, to to look at him as I told him in such high regard to then like be in there and he's in the opposite corner corner of me again it'd be I always say this but it'd be one to tell the grandkids that's for sure you know stuff of dreams of course like me I was never ever going to be able to fight him thank god <laughs> so like imagine being able to say like this is a guy I grew up you know not idolizing but like this is a role model to me and, and a guy I looked up to in the, in the MMA world and then one day I'm stood across the cage from his cousin and you look to my left and there he is. Going absolutely nuts, cornering his cousin against me. It's the stuff, just, you could do it, you could write a film on it or, or you could, it could be a storyline in a book or a film, a fictional one and you, and you would be like, yeah, you've made that up, that, that ain't true. Do you know what I mean? So it's one of them, it would have been, and hopefully, like I, keep, like I just said, hopefully it's one for the future that we get to do. How does it feel as well, um, hearing commentary giving you props, saying, um, well, giving you GSP comparisons? <laughs> That's another one. Like, I grew up watching GSP. He was always, as a kid, especially as a teenager, he was the man when he was, you know, beat Matt Hughes. Um, like, I remember the ultimate fight with Koshek, and I just remember, like, saying to my old man how much I love GSP. And to be honest, I haven't, like, consciously sort of emulated my style on him, but probably subconsciously I have in terms of. I remember watching him and thinking, you know, if he's fighting a wrestler, you'll outstrike him. If he's fighting a striker, you'll outwrestle him. If he's fighting a jiu-jitsu guy, he can do this. If he's fighting a guy who's not very good at jiu-jitsu, he'll take him down and, and, and submit him. And I remember thinking, imagine being that good that, you know, wherever your opponent's strengths lie, you've got the answer for it. And I remember thinking, if, if, if you can do that, you've cracked the code. And uh, that's what I tried to do. And to hear someone like Bispin, who is a legend himself, Hall of Famer, the best British fighter of all time, compare me to a guy we shared the cage with, it's a little bit mind-blowing, to be honest. Like, when I got to the cage and people were saying Bispin was comparing it to GSP, and I was hadn't heard it for myself, so I didn't have a chance to take him. Then you go back and listen to it, and I just sit there sometimes and think, is this all a, a dream or, or a simulation, or, or is this happening? Sometimes i got to pinch myself. Um, but yeah, to, to, to be compared to someone like GSP, like I always say, if I can achieve a third of what he achieved. I retire an happy man. So, yeah, it's, it's the it's the ultimate sort of compliment. I, I couldn't ask for for a better one if I tried. What's the biggest pinch yourself moment you've had since being in the UFC? Um, I've had a few, but like the one the one sort of moment that like spun me out a bit was in my debut because I sort of knew what to expect. Fight week, I, I cornered uh, Marshman at the UFC a couple of times, and I say cornered, I use that term loosely. I just was there to hold the pads and help him. More, obviously, my old man was the court. I was just there to fill the corner up, really, and um, grab the free Reebok kit. But um, so I knew what to expect. Fight week, like with the signing, the signing, the posters and the pictures and everything. I didn't really hit home, and then I remember being in the cage. The walkout didn't hit home really because the arena wasn't as full as you'd see in the main event and I remember being in the cage pacing back and forth like I always do and uh, Bruce Buffer starts edging his weight towards me because I'm just sorry I sort of zone out in the end I know what's going on but it's, it's, it's all like background noise I'm just zoned in I see Bruce coming towards me and I think right he's, he's gonna do the intro and he says fighting out of Abertillery Wales and I just look in hot eyes of him and as he says Jack Tank Show I sort of think that's Bruce Buffer <laughs> like, like that I'm here now, I'm thinking, I'm, 
you, you've warmed up, you, you've strapped the gloves on, you've, you've done all the fight week, and only now is it setting in that, like, that's Bruce Buffer who's just said your name, said your small little town from the valleys, said Jack Tank Shaw. It's something you dream of, it's something you can, um, you envisionize, you, you, you envision it for years as a kid, and then, like, there he is in, in his suit, with his rings on, blinged up, and he was like, I pinched myself more, and I was like, I had to calm myself down a little bit, because I was like, I've made it, I've made it, I'm you. And then I was like, no, 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 wait, you haven't made it yet, because if, if you lose this first fight, it doesn't mean a fucking thing. It, you know, all, all this buzz, it, it just goes away. So I had to pinch myself, and then I remember him congratulating me after the fight, and I was like, fucking Bruce Buffer, of all the people, of all the people that spin me out, it was, it was Bruce Buffer. <laughs> so, Sonia Dong's fighting Marlon Morales this weekend. How do you see that going? I think it's a it's a fight of two two sides because Marlon's not on the best run of form, but the guys he have recently lost are all top top level guys. Um, Song is on the come up, um, and they're both very dangerous fighters. It's a 50-50 fight because of how explosive they both are. I think, like on paper, Song sort of is more explosive for longer, and I think he's a little bit more well-rounded. But at the same time, he will engage in a gunfight. Um, not that he's not a good level at all, obviously he is, he's, he's ranked top 15 in the world, but he's a little bit of a madman in the sense of he loves to just get in there and tear it up, and I think if you fight Marias like that, then you, you're obviously playing with fire a little bit, because for that first round, you, you only got to land one and, and it can be over. I don't think Song's the type to, to go out and get on his bike for a little bit and try and tie him up and tire him out. You know, he's going to take that explosion and Marlon to just go for the finish to tire himself out, and I... I don't know, obviously Song may survive it and tie him up, but it's a real toss-up because if you engage in a gunfight with someone like Marlon, then there's always that chance you can lose, and I think that's ultimately what will happen. I think they will clash early on. I think it'll also be a matter of whoever lands the first big shot is more than likely gonna, gonna win the fight because as good as Song is, you look at um, Marlon against uh, Mirab in his last fight. You know, he's got that rest in elite level where, although he was hurt, he knew how to survive. Once he got the tie up, he knew how to, to just hold on enough to, to, to bring his mind back and, and he'd already spent his energy. Whereas, I don't know, I've, I've never really seen Song rest. I know he, he, he nails the tape down and stuff, but I've never seen him wrestle to an extent where, you know, he, he's surviving, he's got to hold on his instinct then almost. And will his instinct be to dig his feet in and, and try and trade and catch him back? So, I think it's a toss up. I do think uh, Song will get it done, but. I can't write uh, Marias off just because he's lost a couple. Because when you gun fight with him, then then you're playing into his hands almost. Does fighting the winner of that look like an appealing entrance into the rankings? Yeah, hundred percent. Anyone with a, with a number next to their name looks like an appealing appealing thing into the rankings. Like a Sun Sao's there. Um, you know, even guys like O'Malley, guys like a Sun Sao, um, Ricky Simone as well is another one I'd love to fight. Even Murab. Like the thought of. Testing myself, I like I like to test myself against these guys who are elite in one area. Like Murab and Ricky Simone, they they wrestling is truly elite, and I consider myself a very good wrestler. So it's like, what better way to sort of burst onto the scene in the rankings than to than to, to stuff one of their takedowns or because like I I say it like people say oh rest I'm like I'm comfortable wrestling with any of them. Not on a pure wrestler. I'm not a pure wrestler. I've never done a day's pure wrestler. You put me on a on a wrestling mat against a pure wrestler, you probably pin me and fucking 15 point to, to nil me, I wouldn't know the score, I wouldn't know the rules. But put me in the cage and say, let's wrestle for five minutes and use and use the cage. I'm comfortable I can take any of them down. And I'm comfortable I can stuff any of their takedowns. I train with Brett Johns every day, you know. You put Brett Johns in that top 15 in the UFC, he's capable of taking any of them down. So, stuff like that excites me, you know. Obviously the O'Malley fight excites you, he's a, he's a massive name, you know that's going to be on a massive card. Um, people like Dominic Cruz. Frankie Edgar, these legends. There's just so many, like, there's so many exciting opportunities in our rankings. Whether it be a legends fight, whether it be the big names like O'Malley and the top guys, or whether it be like Ricky or Mirab or Song or, or, or these guys who are elite in one area. Like nothing, nothing excites me more than thinking. I wonder if I can just go out there and, and, and prove a little point and nail him with a little takedown. Because I've been there before in fights where they've said, "Oh, I was jacking a coat with his wrestling," and next thing you know, they're on their back and. How's he gonna stop his take down the next thing? You know, we're in the second round and he's blown up his ass and he can't take me down. So stuff like that really excites me. And of course the winner of that fight or the loser of that fight, providing they're still ranked. But anyone that is gonna get me in that ranking spot, you know, anyone at all. You mentioned legends, so I've got to ask, out of the legends in your division, 
Which fight would mean the most to you out of Aldo, Edgar, TJ, or Dominic? Um, Dominic and TJ are like the main two. Um, I love Frank Yeager. I don't. I, I'm. Not, I can say it now. I don't want to fight Frank Yeager. I, I grew, grew up watching the guy win the lightweight belt. Of course, I'll fight him if I go. So it'd be a massive fight, wouldn't it? But I don't really want to fight the guy that, that I grew up idolizing. Um, but if I go, I will. But I mean, like. And I, and I love watching Dominic and TJ, like, they were the top two guys when I was on the come up as an early pro, they were the guys fighting for the belts and they were the guys main event in these big pay-per-views, they, they are the two, like even though Dominic's dropped down the rankings a little bit, they are the main two I look at and think like that, that would be almost a legacy fight for me to be able to, to, to speak to the kids in the gym and the young fighters coming up and say look, like I grew up watching these, these boys fight for the bantamweight title and now I'm in there with them. There's no reason why you lot, you can't be looking at these divisions now, like and, and thinking in a couple of years I'll get to fight that guy. So for me, it's them too, um, and I say that with the utmost respect, you know, nothing but respect to them. But they, they are the, they are the two I'd love to get in there with the most.